Welcome to the Knowledge Seeker channel. The channel is dedicated to exploring critical issues in the world. This presentation is titled The Ijol Nicknaming Ritual in Social Gatherings. This is the flag of the Ijol Nation. The purpose of this presentation is to explain the Ijo nicknaming ritual during social gatherings. It should be noted that the Ijos are very sociable. Hence, whenever four or more people gather, sooner or later, they resort to playing the nicknaming game, which is more like a social sport. Now, before we go on, it is important to know why nicknames are important. In Ijolan, it is very important for everyone, especially the men, to have nicknames. Due to its importance, people choose their nicknames very meticulously. Nicknames are so important that some people have multiple nicknames to reflect different aspects of their lives and there are many names that a person can choose for instance a person can choose a nickname for fighting a war a nickname for being able to dance in a prolific manner a nickname for wooing a member of the opposite sex a nickname for wrestling a nickname for playing soccer, a nickname for singing, a nickname for philosophizing, and so on and so forth. For instance, the legendary individual who is considered as the founding collective ancestor of the Ijon nation, known as Ujo, has several nicknames. They include Ide, Koserake, Indioru, Izonwe, Kalasuo, Kumoni, Ojo, Ogulabiowe, Ondo, or Indo, Uru, Uzon. Note, these names indicate that the individual was very powerful, almost to the point of being regarded as a god. Powerfulness further indicates that the ancestor being was fortified, both physically and spiritually. Following the pattern established by the founding collective ancestor, Subsequent founding ancestors of the Ijo clans or sub-ethnic groups too had nicknames. For instance, A. Kala Oku, the founder of the Kulukma clan, was known as Aluku Dogo. B. Kala Ugbo's nickname was Uguru. C. Olodi's nickname was Igedigburu. D. Akama, the founder of Ogboi clan, was known as Ogboi. This means that the name of the clan is named after its nickname rather than its real name. King Daba of Elem Kalabare or Kalabare land was Igboye Owibo. Kalabeni, the founder of Ibani Boni clan's nickname was Alagbaria. Note, all the founding ancestors of the clans or some ethnic groups had nicknames. Only very few are listed here just to demonstrate what the nickname is means.
how do people choose their nicknames? Generally, people choose their nicknames very carefully. One, some might adopt the names of very popular figures or things or cities that sound attractive to the ear. Two, others may choose nicknames based on various professions. For instance, a very scholarly individual might choose the nickname professor. Professor could also be adopted by someone who thinks he or she is the best at what he or she does. 3. Some choose nicknames with multiple consonants and vowel sounds to increase the vibratory energy of the name. Professor as a nickname. Very common. In particular, those whose real names are not all inspiring take their time to pick nicknames that are all inspiring. Four, all inspiring nicknames generally tend to arouse oral vibration based on the meaning as well as the social, as well as the sound generated when called, as well as the number of consonants in the name that causes vibration. 5. Likewise, sometimes people pick names that reflect their capabilities or proficiencies. 6. A king or a chief might end up with three or more nicknames to reflect the high status of his position in society. 7. In a school environment, a student could choose names like 1. Madmad. This is to demonstrate proficiency in mathematics. Philosopher. To demonstrate an ability to philosophize. Professor. To demonstrate mastery in various subjects and be able to impart knowledge with ease. What is the purpose of the nicknaming ritual? The Ejos use the nicknaming ritual to accomplish several goals. Four are identified here. They include one, it enables people to loosen up and interact freely in a social gathering. Two, it helps to reveal a person's psychosocial state. Three, it is used to warn potential enemies by indicating that one is protected or fortified. And four, it is used as a motivational tool to aspire to a greater height or achieve a goal. Thus, the identified four purposes above are used here to elaborate on the discussion of the nicknaming ritual. So please follow me along as we take them one by one. One. It enables people to loosen up and interact freely in a social gathering. A. A social gathering can be uncomfortable sometimes, especially when people who are not familiar meet to interact. B. Some men are generally shy and need some social mechanism to awaken them. C. The nicknaming ritual helps to reduce the social gap between the elders and young people, as well as between social categories. For instance, it helps the elders to mingle with younger people as they announce and explain their nicknames in succession. 
In particular, it bridges the gap between the most educated and the less educated. It also helps to bridge the social and financial gap between the rich and the moderately well-off and the poor. Why? Why does it do all those things? Because as soon as the ritual or exercise is activated, everyone in the gathering must take turns to announce their nicknames and explain the meaning in succession, regardless of one's social status. Two, the nicknaming ritual helps to reveal a person's psychosocial state. A. When a person announces his nickname, others in the gathering will quietly reflect on the name in order to determine the motive for choosing such a name. B. A particular nickname can tell whether the individual is very sociable or introverted or whether the person is angry or not. C. It can also reveal whether the person is restless or calm in the manner. D. A highly respected individual might have many nicknames as stated earlier in the discussion. E. The nickname choosing can also reveal whether the individual is an assertive or a passive individual or whether he is decisive or indecisive. 3. The nicknaming ritual is also used to warn potential enemies by indicating that one is protected or fortified. A. If someone suspects that somebody is trying to harm or block his path, the individual can use a social gathering to warn the potential troublemaker by choosing a nickname that indicates that the person is spiritually fortified so that no harm or evil can befall him. B. A person can deliberately choose the nickname Lion and explain that he is fearless of anyone on the face of the earth. See, the person can even go further and say that he is an owl. The owl is a predatory bird that haunts both day and night and is considered in most African folk tales to denote badness or a sinister character. D. If a person chooses owl as a nickname, the individual is technically warning potential enemies that he can see both at night and during the day. Therefore, no one should try anything sneaky. E. An individual could choose the nickname rock, which is what? Ugu, to indicate toughness, invisibility, and agelessness. This is a picture of a solid rock. F. An individual who thinks that he is both physically and spiritually fortified can use the nickname Air, a pharaoh. When asked to explain the meaning, the individual might say that he is like the air, which is invisible yet is so powerful that it causes thunderstorms, lightning, hurricanes, tornadoes, and so forth. Thus, air is a very powerful force. By implication, the individual is saying that he is powerful. This is image of an air blowing. Four, it is used as a motivational tool to aspire to a greater height or achieve a goal. A. A student whose nickname is Math Math will be motivated to receive the highest level of education in mathematics. B. An individual who is a womanizer 
is likely to pick a nickname that indicates his prowess. Such an individual might choose a leopard as a nickname. Why? Because the leopard hunts clandestinely and sneaks upon his prey in a very surprising manner. The person bearing this nickname can say, like a leopard, he hunts for a possible date by surprising the target. Thus, by the time the woman knows his intentions, he has already gotten her. See, like the leopard, after succeeding in dating one woman, he will hunt for another. D. Individuals who claim to be brave or like to inform the world that they are courageous can choose nicknames that show toughness. Again, names like the leopard, lion, crocodile, and so on and so forth are common names for courageous individuals. A person can also choose thunder or lightning as a nickname. In fact, in the Jordan, many men like to choose such nicknames to show that they are powerful. Thus, a person who chooses a nickname that shows toughness or courage must demonstrate the ability when conflict arises. An individual who chooses a leopard or a lion must be ready to fight like a leopard or a lion. When does the nicknaming ritual take place? 1. When people gather to welcome someone. 2. When they gather to discuss family or community issues. 3. When they gather for a party or a celebration. 4. When they gather to interact with friends. Note, it is commonly conducted or engaging by men, but it does not prevent some women from participating in it, in a gathering. This is a gathering of a young man. Normally, it is during this kind of gathering that they will initiate the nicknaming ritual. Now, after a nickname is announced, the person must also explain the meaning of the nickname. Every nickname chosen must have a meaning and an explanation for what it stands for. It is the meaning and explanation that captures the attention of those in the gathering. Generally, nicknames that are famous or infamous or outrageous are most likely to attract laughter, thereby catapulting the person to win the contest. The nickname is treated as a, a psycho-spiritual entity that must be activated. The nickname is so important that people generally are expected to act according to the name chosen. And there are many ways they do so. For example, A, an individual who chooses the nickname philosopher, especially among students, must be knowledgeable and be able to communicate by philosophizing on different aspects of human life. B, an individual who chooses a nickname that shows that he or she is a good dancer must really be a prolific dancer. This means that in a party situation, the individual will be able to dominate the dance floor. See, Ijo warriors or fighters or soldiers who have fought a war and are initiated, that is clear, into the sacred warrior societies are honored when they pass away. In some Ijo clans, 
the Uzi ceremony is performed three times to honor them before they are buried. During the ritual, it is the disease nicknames that the talking drums call to awaken their souls or spirits to enter or possess the individuals who are performing the ritual dance to honor them. The, when kings and chiefs and other important personalities pass away, most often it is the nicknames that are called or invoked while burial rites are being performed. There are many Ijo men whose nicknames are even more powerful than their real names and everyone addresses them by their nicknames. For some people, the nicknames are so popularized that people forget or ignore their real names. It is not unusual for some children to identify their father's names by calling the nicknames when introducing themselves. A son or a daughter might introduce himself or herself as the child of Ugu and people will immediately know who is the father. How is the nickname ritual initiated or activated? The nickname ritual is activated as soon as four or more people gather for any event. It could be to welcome an individual or to a communal meeting or a naming ceremony. And there are many ways they do it. For instance, one, as they sit, greet and introduce themselves one person might initiate the ritual by boldly announcing his nickname. Secondly, a second person will interject by asking the person to explain the meaning of the nickname. Third, the individual will explain what the nickname means to the hearing of everyone in the gathering and everyone will laugh and clap their hands to honor the person. This is a gathering of a German for a meeting. In such a gathering, they can initiate the nicknaming ritual to warm up the environment. Thus, everyone in the gathering will take turns to announce their nicknames and explain them in succession. 5. After everyone has announced and explained his nickname, the individual with the most notable or notorious nickname will be selected as the winner of the contest and everyone will rise up and clap repeatedly to honor the individual. They will laugh exhilaratingly. Quite often, names that sound complicated with multiple consonants and vowels tend to win most of the time. Ijo people who were raised in foreign lands are often amazed when they visit Ijo land for the first time. They are surprised when family members, friends and members of the community gather to receive them and initiate the nicknames ritual. To avoid feeling alienated for not being able to participate, sometimes before the individual is taken to any social gathering, a friend or a relative might instruct the person about what will happen in the gathering and quickly encourage the person to choose a nickname before reaching the gathering. Thus, the person will receive a crash training in nicknaming and work with the individual to have an excellent explanation for the name. If an individual has lived in a foreign country or outside an Ijo community for a long time and is able to participate, everyone in the gathering will clap their hands and hail the person for joining in the fun. They would say that they are very proud of him for not forgetting Ijo culture.
Conclusion, it seems that every ethnic group in Africa encourages their members, especially the men, to have nicknames apart from their real names. Hence, quite often, age mates address themselves by their nicknames rather than by their real names. However, due to the sociability of the joint nationality, the members of the ethnicity take the nicknaming to a higher level by developing a spotlight ritual when they gather for any social activity. As soon as one person in the gathering initiates the exercise, everyone in the gathering must take turns to proudly announce their nicknames and explain the meanings. Each time an individual announces his or her nickname, everyone in the gathering would clap for the person to honor his or her presence. After each one has taken turns to do so, they will debate and vote for the person with the most impactful name as the winner of the contest. From that moment, the individual is going to be addressed by that nickname. The nicknaming ritual is used to loosen up and make people relax and interact freely. It helps to reduce the gap between the elders and the younger adults. It helps to reduce the gap in socioeconomic standing among the most educated and the least educated as well as the financially well endowed and the poor. It unites people and enables them to work together to achieve any goal. In war, the nickname fosters fearlessness and a can-do attitude. In school, it motivates students to achieve their educational goals. Thus, it is a very positive psychosocial device used by the Ejors to create a strong social bond among members of the ethnic group. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please subscribe to the channel and listen to other interesting presentations. Likewise, please check the book, The Ejors, A Cultural historical, religious, geographical, and psychological exploration. It is published by Barnes & Noble. Again, thank you for listening to this presentation.